All right, guys, welcome back. We just got done diving today, and it's another special dive. This last video that you guys got to watch, you got to see how Alex Fogg and Pete mapped out the wrecks over in Okaloosa County. Today, we are in Pensacola, and we have another special guest, but I'm going to let her explain exactly what we just dove today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Nicole Grenan. I work with the University of West Florida's Florida Public Archaeology Network as an underwater archaeologist. And today, we did an archaeological shipwreck tour on one of my favorite dives here in Pensacola. Uh, San Pablo, which was wrecked intentionally in 1944 by the OSS, which is a precursor to the CIA, during an experimental test for remote controlling in uh, armed vessels into enemy harbors. So it's an amazing wreck, some really incredible relief, and a ton of life. It was, it was crazy awesome. Wait till you guys see the footage on this dive. And during the dive, of course, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of narration on, on the whole history behind the wreck and why it's called the Russian freighter and and all that kind of cool, spooky 1940s type stuff for World War II. But it's gonna be pretty exciting. You guys stick around, we'll see you guys under the water. Thanks again. Thanks, yeah. Appreciate it. Of course. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Below the Surface. This is probably my most exciting time about making these videos is when I get to talk to you guys and let you guys know exactly what we're doing and what we're diving on. Like you saw in the intro, the San Pablo was sunk in 1944. The cool thing about it is it was a backup plan to the Manhattan Project. So of course the government had a couple different tricks up their sleeves on how they thought that they could end World War II. And this was one of them. What they intended to do was have these ships that were remote controlled by a pilot aircraft and they could steer them into Japanese harbors and blow up their warships. And these weren't normal remote controls, not like our DGIs. These were pretty intense. What you're seeing here is Nicole has a map of the ship and she's pointing out to all of us the different areas of the boat. And right now this is the stern windlass that we're looking at. And you're about to see a better shot of it as I kind of glide over the top of it. Which is pretty cool that it's still intact. Alright here and she's pointing out the three boilers. They're on their side, they're pretty cool. I think they're probably about 20 feet tall, hold a lot of fish around them. It was pretty awesome being able to go out with the archeologists so they could point out all the stuff about the ship and kind of give the history and the story behind it. It's all pretty fascinating stuff. Back in 1944, we didn't have the internet like we have today. So a lot of people just relied on newspapers and ghost stories and hearsay about what this large boat was that was docked out in the Gulf of Mexico for so long. It was at a time where we were afraid of the Russians and the Russians were afraid of us and we were only a couple of years from the start of the Cold War. So the rumors that were floating around was that this large vessel that was out in the Gulf was a spy ship from Russia and it was just sitting there and then all of a sudden one day boom a big old explosion and the boat was sinking at the bottom of the Gulf and this was all top secret so the government wasn't telling what was happening. So you could just imagine the rumors, the speculation, all the talk that was going on, and it was making its way that the Russians were watching us, and that was freaking people out. However, the true story was that the San Pablo was sunk by a German U-boat off the coast of Costa Rica, and then later floated and purchased by the United States government to use as a training vessel so that they could test out this plan. And as I talked about, this was a backup plan to the Manhattan Project, and of course, the Manhattan Project is the one that we actually ended up going with to end World War II when we dropped two nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This plan was not as dramatic and would have taken a lot longer to the end of war if it even had a chance of succeeding, as it would have took thousands of these to even make a dent. It's a pretty cool shot. Look at this eel. But don't miss the toadfish at the bottom right. He's pretty cool. They're all over this wreck. Now for the wreck as it sits now. It's a pretty awesome dive site. It is loaded with fish. I think I saw Jack Creval, Red Snapper, Eel, Flounder, Fugag Grouper, and probably the largest lionfish that I'd ever seen. And of course I wasn't out here to spear fish, so I didn't have it with me and he got away. So if you guys are looking for a really big lionfish, head over to the San Pablo and find them. Huge thank you to Nicole and the University of Northwest Florida archeology span team for taking me out. And as always, get you guys some dive gear. Get on a boat, go out into the golf, do some diving, man. 
Never fails to amaze me on what I find when I'm scuba diving. Check this dude out. I'll see you guys up top.